Yo guys, welcome to my Blight video guide. In this video, I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks for running Blight maps, Blight Ravage maps, how to make a bunch of currency, and set up your Atlas tree. Without further ado, here we go. To start this video, I'm just going to go over how you can self-sustain your Blight. Go over the Atlas tree and like ring anointments and stuff. And then we will get into like what type of loot you can get and then I'll give you tips and tricks for Blight Ravage maps as well. But to start off, I find Blight is pretty easy and consistent making currency, even just the ones that appear in maps. With the right passive nodes on the Atlas tree, I'll go over that in a few minutes. It is really easy to spawn Blights in your maps because the Rusted Scarabs are 2 for 1 chaos, so I usually just buy like 20 C worth at a time. You will definitely make your money back in maps with the scarabs and everything in the blight ravaged maps and the blighted maps are just going to be like icing on the cake. This strategy for mainly the blight maps but uh, it can kind of work in the map ones too. You don't really need the best character for it. The towers will stun lock everything and kill most of the bosses and stuff. It depends if you get unlucky or lucky with tower placements and with the resistance that the monsters have, but most of it is not too bad. So I'll go over the passive tree and show you guys like the good nodes to pick to be able to sustain blighted maps and make your currency. And I'll explain what the nodes do. Alright, so for the blight version of the Atlas tree that I take, these are the nodes I take. Um, I'll just quickly go over this wheel. I'm not sure how good the uh, oil extractors are, if this is a node worth taking or not. I wasn't in this area, so I have no idea. So for the nodes that I actually take, I take uh, Epidemiology, which uh, gives you 80% more chance to contain blighted maps. I've had maps where they drop five blighted maps out of one like blight, which is pretty crazy. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. Then the small nodes aren't bad as well, just increased chance for blighted maps or oils. And then I just grabbed this one because I was kind of near here. It gives you 20% chance to continue, or contain an extra blight encounter, which is decent. It's just 20% more blight. I also take this node here, which is uh, lucky. Makes your chest lucky. And then the end one, which uh, areas contain a blight encounter on the map. Note that you can't use a scarab if you have on this on there for an extra blight encounter. But these make uh, three chests lucky, or four, I mean. So that means that the items in there roll twice, and then the best outcome is what you get. Um, you probably don't need spores in the wind. I just grabbed it because I was there. And then I also get this blighted node, which uh, gives you uh, increased chance for an additional reward chest. And then uh, oils in your maps are 25% chance to be one tier higher. So just more chance for better oils like golden oil, like silver oil and stuff. The ones that you can sell for pretty decent money. So that's pretty much it for the atlas tree that I took for that and then for my ring anoints I used uh, meteor towers create burning ground on three seconds on hit so once they hit an enemy then it will have a burning ground this is kind of good because the burning ground ignores enemies fire resist so our strategy is is we kind of lock them in place with stun towers and uh, freezing towers and then the burning ground will kind of melt them away and then this one will have chilling towers freeze enemies for 0.2 seconds when they are affected by chilling beams so it kind of just keeps them frozen a little bit slows them down between that and the stun tower kind of locks them into place so i'll show you guys how i set up my towers so the way i do my blight towers is this i try to find a cluster of four and then i will put an empowering tower at level three freeze tower at level three a stun tower at level three and then put a meteor tower which is a fire tower at level 4, and then that will kind of clog up an artery if need to be. Alrighty guys, here I'm just going to show you how I normally roll my blighted maps. I want to get as much... Uh, quantity on it because it does affect the chest as well. So here's the process that I go. So here's my blighted, blighted map uh, It's only tier 13. It doesn't matter as long as it's red So if you're first starting out, I believe it's sepa oil. No, nope, not that one one of these uh, Okay, it would be the uh, third one 
So if you're just starting out wanting to get used to it, you're going to want to run Amber Oil. So what it's going to do is re reduce the cost of building and upgrading towers, which is pretty huge because uh, you can build a whole bunch up at the beginning and then you don't have to worry about um, running out of resources and stuff and you can kind of keep everything under control. But once you get comfortable with blighted maps, I use Crimson Oil. So I put three of these in for regular ones because it will make 30 of my chests lucky. So it means it rolls twice. And then the best rewards is uh, what I take. So I'm going to anoint that. And then I'm going to go here and then we're going to chisel it up because we want more quantity. And then I roll rare. Uh, big tip here, two mods that you want to try to avoid, maybe three is enemies cannot be slowed below base movement speed because that makes your frost towers absolutely useless. Um, monsters cannot be stunned which makes your stun tower useless. And then for the third one, it's not so much for regular blighted maps but definitely for the blight ravage maps is uh, monsters have more movement cast and attack speed because they'll move through the pass faster. So once we get it uh, chiseled up, we want to elk it. And then get something to see what we got here. So for me, this is fine. If your build can't run reflect, then obviously re-roll this. So this is looking pretty good. So then what I'm going to do is put a Val Orb on it. This is going to do two things. One, it can give me a chance for eight mods and do quantity really high. And two, if the map is corrupted, it can drop tainted oils. So we're going to corrupt it. If it goes unidentified, that's great. If it gets eight mods, as long as we can run it, it's good too. So here we go. Okay, it didn't do either, but uh, this is fine. Unfortunately, the quantity went down. So now that we have 63% quantity, I probably wouldn't really do this with this one, but if it was like over 80 or around 100, what we would do is put sacrifice fragments in. So we would put these in. Oops, take my blight thing out of there. And what these will do is each one of these adds 5% quantity. So if you have like a really big ticket map here, you would uh, put that in and it would give you 20% quantity on the map. And I believe if my math is correct, 4% quantity for the chest. So that is how I roll my regular blighted maps. And then when I do the full blight ravage map, I go through that process again and run that map. All right, for this little area of the video before I get into the loot portion and how to craft your blight maps and stuff, I'm just going to show you guys a little highlight reel here. It's not too long, but I uh, just wanted to show you guys what you can get in here. As for loot, I uh, had loot for 10 of these. It took me about... Um, I would say about an hour and a half, I would say. Close to that, maybe an hour and 40 minutes. But here's all the uh, relevant loot that I got from it. It's pretty good. Um, I can go over how much I made, uh, breaking down all the currency and stuff. So I'll just give a quick breakdown here. So Orb of Annulment, 9C. Uh, chisels is 4. Vow Orbs is 10. Uh, Bobbles is 1, Regals is 5, GCP is 6, Chance Orbs are 3C, Ancient Orbs are 10, uh, Binding I got 1C worth, Alchemies I got 5C worth, Fusings I got 14C worth, uh, Stack Decks I sell these for 1.5 each, I got 103C for those, uh, Jewelers I got 5C, Scours I got 11C worth, uh, regrets 10, alts uh, 11 C worth, uh, blessed orb is 4 C worth, exalt shards 4 C worth, uh, chromies I got 9 C worth, horizon 2, harbinger orb is 1, uh, corruptions, remnant of corruptions is 1, uh, sextants are 3 C each, so I got 6 C worth there. Uh, unmaking is 1 C each, so 7 C, uh, lesser ichor is 4 C worth. The Ember is 5C. I got, uh, how many Chaos we got here? 34C, uh, just in raw Chaos. Instilling Orb is 2C, and this is only worth half a C. And then you get Scarabs as well. This one's worth 2. Uh, we got two of these worth 1C each, so 2C there. Uh, these are 9C, 3C each. 
uh, 2C here. And then for oils, we got 18C for that oil. I can never pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, 38C for tainted oil. 36C for silver oil. Uh, 88C for golden oil. And 2C each for black oil, so 6C. So in 10 blighted maps, I made 568C profit. So now I'm going to show you guys a Blight Ravage map and uh, do a full run through of it and do the best commentary that I can. And then after that, uh, we will be good for the video. I hope you guys found this guide helpful. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. It'll help the channel out a lot. Alrighty, guys, here's the uh, video for my Blight Ravage map that I'm going to do. Um... Yeah, let's uh, see how this goes. I haven't done one yet this week, but I have done these previously, so I'm going to do it the same way as I always have. So what we're going to do is get quality up to 20%, because that's going to drop more items from the chest. And then for anointing, I usually do it this way. So I use two clear oils and a crimson. So that's going to slow down monster movement speed and give lucky chests. And then I do two, uh, was it sepia oil? And uh, a Crimson again, so it's going to give your towers more damage and more loot at the end. And then I do the third thing, Amber Oil, which uh, reduce costs of upgrading towers because you're going to want lots of them. And then Crimson Oil again. So that's how I uh, roll my stuff because then it gives you lucky chests and whatnot. And then we are now going to Alk this. All right, so let's roll this thing. So I'm going to hit it with an Alk. I'm looking for like something decent. Uh, I'm not going to do that one just because of no regen. I don't want to deal with it for the video. So this one isn't bad for me as I'm immune to curses and stuff. Uh, item quantity can be a little bit higher, but whatever. So now we're going to slam it with a Val Orb and hope we don't get those two mods. Okay, unidentified. Perfect. So this thing is going to have like 100 quantity. Since 40% of that goes to the chest. It's not the best, but it'll work. And then we're going to use uh, Adziri Fragments because each one of these is going to give five quantity. So we'll do that. And then we're going to open this up. So here we go. Blight Ravage time. So it's in a layer map. So the first thing I do when I start is I go to the pump and cast the portal. Because then the portal symbol will be on the map and I know exactly where the pump is. So that's why I do it. So now we're going to start it. So I'm going to got it set up. I'm going to try my best to do commentary, but I may need to focus at certain points so I don't uh, screw it up. So I'm just going to look for like a few areas kind of close to the pump. So I'm going to go here. So I'm going to start with an empowering tower. I only want to go to number three because uh, it works the best. Same with this. And then at the back, I'm going to put a meteor tower at rank four. And then I'm just going to start. So I'm right now I'm kind of just waiting for more lanes to open up. I don't want to spend all my juice yet. Just because of that. So I'm just going to work on getting more, uh, more juice and stuff. Until uh, more stuff opens up here. I may do some stuff in this area. I think I might. So I can do like a full setup. So you kind of want to go like in the center for this. And then go a nice big radius. And then I'm going to go stun here. I'm just going to do that to slow him down. As I notice a path opening up here. So I want to try to block this off as quick as I can. So I'm going to go here. So get that as big as I can. See stuff's getting through. So you just want to make sure that it doesn't. So I'm going to put a freeze tower here. To kind of slow him down, because with my ring annoy, it should uh, it should um, freeze him a bit. And then now I'm just going to try to clog up this artery here with some meteor towers. Going to put two in. So so far the lanes are doing really well, so we can really like bottleneck them in here. So now I'm just going to not do anything for a bit and kind of kill stuff. Just to uh, get some more points because it's probably going to start to go back up here, which it just did. So I want to make sure that I have enough juice for that. So notice here how like the boss is like constantly being stunned. 
That's what we want. Just making sure. I probably should put a meteor tower down here, but I'll just let him be stunned for now. Because I want to get just a little bit more juice. There we go. And then he should be stunned. Now I want... Now I want to try to, uh... Get this, like, clogged up a little bit. So we're going to go with that. I'm going to go stun and freeze here. Just making sure nothing's getting through. Nothing should really get through here, but it could happen. So I just want to keep an eye out for it. So stuff's starting to come this way now. So I want to kind of... Get this all plugged up a little bit. Alright, see if we get any more towers. So right here should pretty much plug up all bosses. I just want to make sure that nothing's getting through here. Kind of want some more towers there. I'm just making sure everything's good here. I'm going to clog up up here a little bit farther too. Boss should be good. Okay, I'm going to go make sure that these bosses are taken care of here. But it looks like they're pretty uh, slow right now. So I'm going to put a meteor here. I'm going to put a couple meteors. Okay, they're still stopped. One, two. Meteor. Nothing's coming through yet. Okay, let's go get some damage on them. So with all the meteor towers I got through here, it should pretty much take care of all of this with all the stuns and stuff. So you notice how he's not moving. I just want to make sure nothing's getting through here. Oh good, we got towers back here for uh, additional support. So I'm going to put two meteors here. I kind of have them around close to the pump, just kind of firing from the back. Because then it, they can fire from, to the other side too if something starts to come through there. So I'm going to put one here as well. Okay. Oops, try not to die. Alright, we got a couple bosses coming through here now. Try our best to slow them down. Fully upgrade this. Check over here just to make sure. Alright, we're good. Nothing's getting through. So notice how the meteors are just chunking him. They are pretty tanky boys, but if they can't move, then they can't really do anything. So we're just going to go do some cleanup here. I'm focusing more now on just making sure everything's smooth and... Uh, Nothing's getting like too crazy. I'm thinking of maybe putting something here to uh, just for more damage. We'll go meteor, meteor, meteor. It's raining meteors. One, two, three. And then I'll probably do it down here somewhere if I can. But this was a pretty uh, decent layout too. Everything's kind of. Just, okay, so these will have meteors. So we're just going to get some more damage up. Whoa, whoa, this is bad. That was close. Okay, better plan. It. I was like, I'm good. Just, my biggest issue is I'm like, all right, I'm getting comfortable. That's going to be defended or whatever. And that clearly was not the case. That was close. Try to get some pops here to get some of his health down. No one's got through yet, though. That was close, though. There was like a parade coming through there. Alright, let's do this. There we go. Him out of there. Little tanky boys, make sure nothing's coming through here. There's still another lane open, so there's a couple here. I'll just get rid of them, and hopefully that'll... Okay, all those lanes are dead. We just have to worry about up here. Is that it? Where's the last monster? Where's the last monster? Right over here. There we go. So that's uh, the Blight Ravage map clear. Let's see what we got for loot here. It's quite a bit. All the item... Oops, I didn't want to take the portal. All the uh, higher item levels and stuff, I don't really deal with that stuff too much. Because this is with a pretty uh, pretty juiced up filter. Heavy belt, oh, it's not a mage blood, whatever. 
But you'll notice that the item level uh, is 87 a lot of the time. So if you're trying to get high item level gear, it's pretty good for that. So let's uh, see what we got for loot. So we got oils. Lots of oil. Lots of crappy oil too, but I usually use that to upgrade or whatever. Legion. Uh, I got a bunch of incubators. Let's leave them on the ground. We'll just head up here. A bunch more oils. Hopefully we get some good oils. That would be nice. Good oils. Oh, chaos orb. Okay. Whatever. Man, I cannot click right now. Okay, let's head back down here. Where's all my crap at the bottom? I don't know what's left. All right, crappy talesmen. Well, at least we got an awakened section. All right, uniques, here we go. This is gonna be our mage blood. I don't even know what that is. I don't know if those are worth anything or not. Don't really know too, too much about uniques. Yeah, essences, so screaming. Oh man, look at this. This looks like money right here. All right, let's start with currency. Chaos. A couple chaos in there, like three. Oh, there's even more down here. All right, let's go with these. One of these has got to have a divine orb or something. Another chaos, another chaos. Scour. There we go, we got tainted oil. That works. They're not super expensive this week. They go for like 10C or something, but this map's already paid for itself for sure. Another tainted oil. There we go. Doing well. We're just, uh, we're making the money now. This is all profit now. I'm surprised my inventory is not full. Well, that's it for those. Definitely won't have a low tier oil problem now. All right, where else do we got? We got stuff over there already. Nice, we got divination cards. Probably only get really stacked decks. There we go. Um, what can I drop? I'll just uh, dump a load off here real quick. Drop this. Got so many oils and stuff. Try to keep the more expensive stuff for now. That should be good. All right, stack decks. These are one and a half chaos each that I've been selling them for. So we made like 10C with those. The Wrath. And then jewelry ones. These ones aren't really worth anything. More currency. Never really got anything good out of these currency ones though. And then I think what? Oh, we got a few more down at the bottom there. Weapons are usually pretty garbage. So, so it feels like there's a lot more chests than the white ravage ones. All right, currency again. Let's see what we got. Chaos, chaos. That orb, two chaos, one chaos. And then these. And then just crappy weapons again. Another chaos. Wake and Sextant. And I think that's all. So if I want to give a rough breakdown of this one, uh, I'm just going to do with currency and kind of go off the top of my head. Annulments are usually like 4 or 5C. We got 13C there. Um, these are 10, maybe a little bit more. Regrets are usually 1 to 1, so there's 5C there. Um... Tainted oils, I believe I was selling these for eight, so there's 16C there. Uh, these are like two to one usually, so there's 4C there. Uh, these are usually three to one, 9C, like we made like a killing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the Blight Ravage map and how I do it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'll help the channel out a lot. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a great day. <laughs>